Good morning, Willard Wildcats. Happy Wednesday, March 10th. We have birthdays to celebrate today. Happy birthday to Abby E, Penelope H, Zane H, and Mila S. We hope you have wonderful birthdays on this Wednesday. Wildcats, today I'm gonna read to you one of my favorite books because this book reminds me of March. It reminds me of spring and the wildflowers and all the beauty that we see when you look outside your window. So if you can think for just a moment and visualize a green hill or wildflowers, I want you to think about those as we read today's story. Today's story is Miss Rumpheus, and you'll see some of those in pictures as well. And the story and pictures are by Barbara Cooney, Miss Rumpheus. And look at these beautiful lupines to get you thinking and visualizing about all those flowers we're gonna think about as we read this story. The lupine lady lived in a small house overlooking the sea. Between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The lupine lady is a little old lady, but she has not always been that way, I know. She is my great aunt and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice who lived in a city by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharves and the bristling masts of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of faraway places. When he finished, Alice would say, when I grow up, I too will go to faraway places. And when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather. But there is a third thing you must do. What is that? asked Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful. Isn't that a nice idea? said her grandfather. All right, said Alice. But she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up, washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework. And pretty soon she was grown up. You know, every morning when I'm driving to Willard, I see a couple who walk and they pick up trash as they're walking. What a nice idea of making the world a more beautiful place. I bet you could think of something like that you could do in your space or around your neighborhood with your family to take action. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things that she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home and went to live in another city, far from the sea and the salt air. There she worked in a library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. People called her Miss Rumpheus now. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air wrapped itself around her and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumpheus, but not quite. So Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day she met the Baba Raja, king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said, come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumpheus went in and met the Baba Raja's wife. The Baba Raja himself fetched a green coconut and cut the slice off the top so Miss Rumpheus could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Baba Raja gave her a beautiful mother of pearl shell on which she had painted a bird of paradise and the words, you will always remain in my heart. You will always remain in mine too, said Miss Rumpheus. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumpheus walked, watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in the glory in the evening. 
She started a little garden along the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world already is pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. The next morning, Miss Rumpheus was not very well. Her back was bothering her again, and she had to stay in bed most of the time. The flowers she had planted in the summer before had come up and bloomed in spite of the stony ground. She could see them from her bedroom window, blue and purple and rose-colored. Lupines, Miss Rumpheus said with satisfaction. I have always loved lupines the best. I wish I could plant more seeds this summer so that I could still have more flowers next year, but she wasn't able to. After a hard winter spring came, Miss Rumpheus was feeling much better. Now she could take walks again. One afternoon, she started to go up over the hill where she had not been in a long time. I don't believe my eyes, she cried when she got to the top, for there on the other side of the hill, was a large patch of blue and purple and rose-colored lupines. Isn't that beautiful? It's the wind, she said as she knelt in delight. It was the wind that brought the seeds from my garden here, and the birds must have helped. Miss Rumpheus had a wonderful idea. She hurried home and got her out her seed catalog. She sent off to the very best seed houses for five bushels of lupine seed. And that summer, Miss Rumpheus, her pockets full of seeds, wandered over the fields and headlands, sowing lupines. She scattered seeds along the highways and down the country lanes. She flung handfuls of them around the schoolhouse and back into the church. She tossed them into the hollows and along the stone walls. Her back didn't hurt her anymore at all. Now, some people called her that crazy old lady, which isn't very nice or not acting with integrity. The next spring, there were lupines everywhere. Fields and hillsides were covered with blue and purple and rose colored flowers. They bloomed along the highways and down the lanes. Bright patches lay around the schoolhouse and back of the church. Down in the hollows and along the stone walls grew beautiful flowers. Miss Rumpheus had done the third the most difficult thing of all. And what was that? She made the world a more beautiful place. My great aunt Alice, Miss Rumpheus, is very old now. Her hair is very white. Every year there are more and more lupines. Now they call her the lupine lady. Sometimes my friends stand with me outside her gate, curious to see the old lady who planted the fields of lupines. When she invites us in, they come slowly. And they think she's the oldest woman in the world. She offers and tells them stories of faraway places. When I grow up, I tell her, I will go to faraway places and come home to live by the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, says my aunt. But there is a third thing you must do. What's that, I ask? You must do something to make the world more beautiful. All right, I say. That's an important life message, isn't it? But I do not know yet what that will be. I hope, Wildcats, that you enjoyed today's story, Miss Rumpheus. I hope it inspires in you some IB action and you think about what you can do to make the world, your space, your neighborhood a better place and our school. Wildcats, remember we are safe, respectful, and responsible. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on Thursday.